crime is at a 40-year low. Someone has to explain why your local police department has gone from this to this. Yeah. Yeah. Has anybody here tonight ever heard of Doraville, Georgia? Me neither. <laughs> but it's a town of 8,000 people, and they have their own tank. So does Nixon, Missouri, and Justice, Illinois. What these small towns and hundreds just like them have in common, besides a refreshing lack of hipsters, <laughs> is that they, and big cities too, have been gifted by the Pentagon with tons of government surplus war equipment, fresh from our glorious victories in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, I understand it's a dangerous world out there, and threats have changed. When I was a kid, there was no such thing as Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't need to fill our streets with any more horrifying death machines when we've already got GM. <laughs> <clears throat> the military should dispose of these things the way they always did in the past, by selling them to Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Because cops are only human, and we all know what it's like when you get a new toy. You want to use it. I bought a glue gun once, and by the end of the weekend, my dog's face was stuck to the toilet brick. <laughs> but in West Springfield, Massachusetts, the police department's new toy is two grenade launchers. Why? In case Boko Haram takes Connecticut? <laughs> It's hard enough keeping the George Zimmermans out of the police academy without having bazookas in the brochure. Once you start dressing and equipping people like an occupying army, they start acting like one. Every day there's another story in the paper about cops beating innocent people. The video that's been making the rounds out here lately is a patrolman punching the lights out of a deranged homeless grandmother. Even worse, that's their training video. I mean, this guy has been demoted to desk duty while officials conduct a review, but what's to review? He's punching an old lady in the face. Which is not to say most cops act like this. They don't. And if you're a police officer who happens to pull me over sometime in the near future, I'm especially not talking about you. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. And handsome. <laughs> And I rarely say that to a man. Thank you for your service. And let's just both agree that the strong smell coming from my car is a skunk I rescued on the road and brought into the vet a few days ago. Now, I have no illusions what life would be like without the police. It would be that movie, The Purge, every night. But unfortunately, it's not just the equipment the cops are borrowing from the army. It's also this philosophy of overwhelming force. You know, we used to send SWAT teams only for hostage or active shooter scenarios. It happened a few thousand times a year. Now it happens a thousand times a week. Forced, no-knock entries into private homes, and now for almost any reason at all, like serving warrants breaking up poker games, arresting low-level pot dealers. Come on. It's a guy who sells weed. You don't need to shoot his dog and crash through his window. Just grab him when he comes out for the ice cream truck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, police, we want to be on your side. But the words on your car, protect and serve, refer to us, not you. <laughs> in, the... <clears throat> in the 90s, conservatives used to warn about jackbooted government thugs coming to take away our freedoms. But where are those conservatives today when we need them? <laughs> this is the massive expansion of government power that you numbskulls in the Tea Party should be freaking out about. You're always screaming. You're always screaming about the loss of liberty and how tyranny is coming. Yeah, it's coming right through the door with a battering ram, no warrant, and a stun grenade. Or to put it in a way you can understand, I'm scared of the cops and I'm white. <laughs> That's our show. I'll be at Heinz Hall.